Emmanuel says it makes me relatable, just yeah, in case right. some of you are having your dinner. I can see you some are. of you got chicken in your teeth. I'd actually be a lot more suspicious of somebody that was in a committed relationship mm. and wasn't hurt at the end of it. Yeah. Then I'd be thinking, yo, we'll see. Okay. You kind of said it. Uh, did I? In a way. But then don't you feel that could be like potentially dangerous if you allow yourself to stay in, in your head, this is in thing. your space? This is the thing. You don't stay there for too long. I think it's healthy to get in your feelings, but you don't stay there for too long. I know it will not calm down. I do me to see it. Guys, I feel like I have chicken in my teeth. I just ate literally like five minutes ago, so I'm so sorry. Emmanuel says it makes me relatable, just yeah, in case right. some of you are having your dinner. I can see some of you got chicken in your teeth. <laughs> you're watching this video and you feel insecure, but now, because you've seen it, even full screen it, it makes you feel comfortable. Like, that's what I'm saying. Right here. Appeal. That's the appeal. Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome to Mo Chunk TV and welcome to another installment of Chit Chat with Mo. Um, subset dating 21 where we talk about dating in the 21st century not to... dating for 21 year olds no dating that's, that's in the what 21st you, century that's what you thought no 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 that's what the uncultured <laughs> subscribers thought what are we talking about we're talking about how to deal with heartbreak heartbreak oh. what, 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 what. so Mo said I'm an expert in this that's uh. why she called me here so we'll see okay you, you kind of said it uh, did I? in a way so guys, this is something that obviously a lot of Christians go, go through. We're not invincible, we're not infallible. Um, so we thought, you know what, let's come and do some, some tips for you guys about how to go over it. But before we go into it, um, when was your last heartbreak? Last heartbreak yeah. was 2017, April. Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Oh. Well, like, just, just short of two years. Oh, oh guys, do you like my nose hair? Vote. <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to say nothing. Innit, you know I'm I just need to let people catch it themselves in it. But you know what I'm saying the comment section is there in it. <laughs> so do fight and let us know what you think of the new look. Turn to the side. You know, it's a little, little certain light. You know, a little certain light for the for the new year. You know, for the new year. So let us know what you think about that down below. Go, okay, so 2017. Mine was pretty recent actually. Okay, so it was like November last year. Those of you who pay attention to my channel know that I was having a bit of a rough time, even from being my chunks. Um, and it's a wow. A lot it's of a, wow. a lot it's of a, wow. a lot of my messages were kind of centered around like sadness and things kind of going downhill. And um, yeah, I had an amazing October, and then like November was just like the complete opposite. And I kind of had to spend a lot of time getting over that. Mm. And I'm in a much better place now. It seemed only right for us to do a topic on heartbreak. Excuse me. I just ate. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> okay, so first tip. Right, just going like that. Yeah. First tip. Before, actually, before even dealing with heartbreak, I feel like you have to prepare yourself to prevent like an unhealthy um, heartbreak experience if things don't go the way that you plan. Mm. And you do that by not idolizing the person that you're with mm. and not idolizing your relationship. Mm. The worst thing is if the person that you're with is your everything. Yeah. Like if they're the person you wake up to, the person you go to sleep to, you if they're the person that jury, the was 24 hour phone conversations, FaceTimes, I never, like, I don't get it, but... You're trying to say unhealthy yeah. attachments that get built up in some of these relations, dating yeah, yeah, relationships. Yeah, 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 definitely. And if that happens, like, imagine you make somebody your everything, they're, they're your motivation, they're your reason for living and breathing. First of all, that's idolatry. Mm. That's a place that only Jesus deserves because mm. he's the only one that won't let you down. Yeah. But if you, let, if you let it get to that point, when the heartbreak comes, it's not just your heart that's broken, it's your whole life that's mm. broken. Yeah. And then after that, there's not, this video is not going to help you much if yeah. you're in that situation. So please prepare yourself in advance. Don't idolize your relationship. So you're saying prevention is better than cure, basically. Yeah, it's always going to hurt. Yeah. Heartbreak, I mean, if you're, if you're invested in someone, it's always going to hurt. Mm. But... Some of you would do well to just take yeah, time. Take time to and take don't time. form those unhealthy bonds in the first place. I think that's definitely a, a mistake I made. Um, with my last <laughs> yeah, heartbreak, um, I kind of allowed, not even, I wasn't even thinking about it. And uh, around the time when this person came into my life, mm. I was on a production break from MCTV. So I was less busy. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like, you know, there's a verse in the Bible where it says that the devil gives work to idle hands. So I feel like that that's kind of like what in that situation, like I was there available and it kind of just brought a situation that, you know, occupied my time. And because I, I had the time, there was time to be occupied. Right. And what made you feel like you, what made you want to give that much time to that person? Um, perhaps because it, there was nothing, there was nothing else requiring my time at that Mm. in in that moment Mm -hmm. if that makes sense Mm -hmm. like if if for example i had four videos i knew i had to upload for in a in a single week i wouldn't i certainly wouldn't have been doing overnight phone calls yeah yeah, yeah. you know because i know i have to be up the next morning yeah it is so in in hindsight how would you feel at that time how would i feel at that time Hmm. perhaps just focusing on myself and focusing on my craft trying to get better reach the next level because every time I take a production break I do take it purposefully to rest mm. um, to re-strategize yeah. so maybe more of that no, that makes sense and yeah. I think if you'd use that time as well and this is a good lesson for anybody that takes like a holiday time of work time off of your routine mm. to also think like I've got more time I'm going to spend so much more time with find both like learning about myself but learning about like God mm. and like spending time with Jesus so that if someone does come across then you know at least yeah. just, they're gonna get a healthy amount of your time yeah ain't no one taking up your whole night that kind of thing <laughs> okay. do you know what I mean okay no, no, <laughs> yeah so but that's I feel like that's tip number one though so Mo what's tip number two um okay so I'm a very big believer in like getting in your feelings a lot of people will tell you online get out of your feelings just get on with it to be busy um and I feel like this is a very, I guess, bad notion in our generation where we feel like we need to be always on. Mm. Um, so I think when a lot of things were happening, I was very hesitant mm. to plug myself back into work because, number one, I knew that the, the quality of my work would be reduced. I knew that the work, my workflow... In fact, I did try and it just wasn't... You know, it wasn't flowing because mentally, as a creative, you require your mental space to be good Mm -hmm. for you to produce good work. Um, So for me, I mean, I guess I did have the luxury as well. A lot of people that work maybe nine to fives, they probably can't say, oh, do you know what? I'm taking two weeks off. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, you probably, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. ask for it, but it, the likelihood of you getting that because of uh-huh, heartbreak. Uh-huh. Yeah, Whereas yeah, me, yeah. because I'm my own boss, I got to take that time off. I spent, nice. I spent a lot of time sleeping. Um, literally, spent a lot of time mm. sleeping. If you guys, Did you find it helpful? Yes. If you go back to my video, Bean My Chunks, a week long rot, literally for a week, I did nothing. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that allowed me... But then don't you feel that could be like potentially dangerous if you allow yourself to stay in, in your head, this is in thing. your space? This is the thing. You don't stay there for too long. I think it's healthy to get in your feelings, but you don't stay there for too long. I hear that, I hear that. I, I hear think that. it's unhealthy to try and just jump jump straight out of it. Like you're hurt. Deal with those emotions. Feel those feel those emotions. You hurt my G. I think more mm-hmm. than anything, cry if you need to cry. Um I'm a big crier and I like to sit in the dark. Um In the dark? Yeah. I swear. It's soothing. Mighty. And I also like the seaside. No, don't say where I live. You live in an undisclosed location that doesn't have a sea. <laughs> That's just there's, a very a, far there's, from there's a seaside nearby Brighton. Um, so I did plan a trip there, but then I didn't end up going um, for one reason or the other. But one thing that really helped me, I think two years ago, not heartbreak, but I was going through some things um, in terms of where I wanted to go in life. So I just went to the seaside to pray and that really helped. So to think, get in the way a little bit. Yeah, find, yeah. find that outlet. Yeah, but I guess you got to own up to the fact that it hurts, isn't it? Yeah, like, I, I think, think yeah, yeah. But I think girls do that better than guys, though. Like, mm. admitting that something's hurt, because obviously, like... Oh, fam, like, the group chats, a lot of the time people are telling you, just like, just move on, don't be moist, you know what I'm mm. saying? Like, there's enough fish in the sea, blah, 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 blah. Do yeah, you, you're, you're like, right, put that you in your group to... chat? Huh? Put that in your group chat. Um, you might, like, okay. Sorry, I've got a cough. Itchy throat. I didn't tell you to tap. Don't worry, man. That helped, I just said you get out there. See, that's what, that's what brothers do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, you put that in your chat? You might talk to your man then about how... Yeah, like, I, I, I feel like I spoke to my friends individually, not in a group chat. It, depending on your friend, like, on your group dynamics, you might do. I know a lot of people do, just to kind of, yeah. like, get it out there to, mm. like, the close squad that this is happening, that's happening, that kind of thing. So it's yeah. not unusual. I wouldn't say... It depends on who your circle is, whether you can take their counsel. I guess that's another thing. You have to be wise about the counsel that you take in. Yeah, definitely. Because there's a lot of people that um, have stupid <laughs> advice 
their, their mentality is, oh, is ridiculous advice, yeah. and they should not be allowed to speak to you in certain concerning situations. Concerning certain things, yeah. Concerning certain things, hundred percent. Like yeah. there are there are some some moves in the world. See, yeah, I'm you're getting into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, if something hurts, it hurts, isn't it? It's yeah. not going to be like that forever. So yeah. don't be scared to feel that way. Yeah, like, I don't know why people are so scared of their feelings sometimes. And so admit it to other female. people as well. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like <laughs> I'd be, I'd actually be a lot more suspicious of somebody that was in a committed relationship mm. and wasn't hurt at the end of it. Yeah. Then I'd be thinking, yo. What were you guys doing the whole time? What, were you, on, were you actually in love with the person? But even not in love, like, did you have any feelings? Did you have any like mm-hmm. plans for the future? Yeah, and yeah. all of that comes crashing down, and you're good. Two hundred. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Next tip. My head's itchy. <laughs> Pat, don't scratch. Pat. <sighs> yeah. That feels refreshing. Okay. Yeah. Well, my next tip was going to be trust God. Okay. Like, trust God entirely. See, with he's so holy. <laughs> Everything so far. <laughs> when you the blood. But yeah, like trusting God because it might seem like, okay, in my situation, I'm not single by choice. Mm. Well, I didn't become single. When I was heartbroken, I didn't become single by choice. Mm. Um, my girlfriend died. Yeah. Like, and. But that was, was so 2017. 2017, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That was the last no, time. No, but you went out with somebody else, so I thought it was that person. It was very, very brief, though. That last one oh, was okay. very, very brief. So it wasn't, there wasn't nearly yeah. the same level of. That was early stages where you're more rational if you say what I mean but not for maybe me, not more but, you know <laughs> that's another video but that's a testimony video oh boy but yeah like so she she passed away because she had a um an illness that took her life yeah. and that caught me and everyone else like off guard yeah. but that relationship I was convinced man was never going to be single again yeah do you get what I mean so it's like I was um yeah like I was that guy telling my friends yeah just be content God has got his you know he's got his plans blah 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 me I'm there saying this contentment game it's not for me you know I've already finished mm. those levels then God said like <laughs> no mm. like obviously I'm sure he wasn't laughing like yeah, that yeah 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 but his yeah. so his plans completely like usurped mine what did I say usurped his God mm. they were different to mine and Such I had to trust nice that English word usurped it. see I'm a I'm a <laughs> I read books you know at, well. Yeah, man, I paid attention in English, innit? You know what I'm saying? So. Too much attention. All he does is correct me. Oh, that's all I do. Is it? Is it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a healthy part of 70% our 70% of what he does. Matty, mathematician, I see you, my G. 70% of that. Yeah, and I had to trust that actually God knows what he's doing. Mm. Like, in this situation, he did what was best. Like, <clears throat> so much fruit came from that. And it was hard, but it was humbling for me. And it was so good for me to know and believe that and have evidence in my life that God is God has a much better plan than I've got. Mm. So even though this hurts right now, mm. like if I believe that all things work together for good, so does the heartbreak. Yeah. So do the times when it doesn't go the way that you plan. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, trust God, man. He's he's got his plans. Trust yeah. God. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think kind of leading off of that, um, something I kind of always have in mind is that if God takes away something from you, is he's probably going to replace it with something better. Um, what this it reminds me of is that image of the the little girl, the tiny teddy, and like Jesus is saying, just, just trust me, just give me that little one. I've got a much bigger one for you back here. And that doesn't mean he's giving you a better boyfriend. Is it? Like I know, but I, it's just an illustration. So carry on, carry on. Let me not. This is your show. <laughs> Chunks of life, fashion, entertainment. This is your your shindig. Stop. Okay, so I believe if if God ever takes, I'm listening. I right, sorry, sorry. I'm I'm listening to you. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm always ready. Stay ready. You never have to get ready. <laughs> Yep, I know, I know. Too Jeez. much soul, too much. Woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I believe um, if God takes away something from you, He will always replace it with something good or something much better. The way I normally see it, especially with my last heartbreak, I felt like that He was a great guy. Um, Emmanuel might have interesting opinions about that. Did have <laughs> interesting opinions about that. <laughs> so I was having a very hard time letting it go as a result of this was a good one bro like sometimes if you don't let it go god will just take it <laughs> boy get it get it get i don't know you just seem too happy about this Emmanuel. no nah, i'm happy that like you said <laughs> god had his plans for you and he cared about you so much that he just stepped in at the right time and then just <laughs> thank you jesus <laughs> because do you know what 
apart from the fact that he might bring you someone better i feel mm. like it also made me a better person because it, it made me like reach in and you know figure out perhaps the things that i felt like i wasn't doing right not to mm. like play the blame game or and um, blame yourself for certain things like there were certain things that I said I was going to do in, in 2018 and I hadn't quite done it, like personal stuff. Um, so in those moments, I thought, okay, cool. If I want to be someone's wife one day and I want to be someone, um, a great man's wife, not just anybody's wife, yeah. um, there's certain qualities that he probably would be looking out for as well. Yeah. So little by little, I started working on those things spiritually, physically, um, in my routine. Just so many different things and it, it actually made me like much better as a person yeah, yeah no, definitely i think it, what you said something that was really key though like mm. your um well how can i say this like what you wanted your standards mm. returned to where they were and should be yeah like that was something that was noticeable which i thank god for that mm. you know like you like you just said it now you wanted to you wanted you want to be a wife to a great man yeah of god mm. and that was that's what you wanted so part of in order for that to happen and God willing, that does happen in the future. Amen. Hallelujah. Then something that wasn't that had to go, and I guess mm. that's another tip that's that sometimes the heartbreak. Ooh. Eh? How can the just go off like that? Okay, guys. So we were rudely cut off by the lights. Disgusting behavior. Yeah. Literally, like God might you have need to, to catch your you. breath. Yeah. He just had to do some Superman ish um, to go get the lights back on. All sorts of bicycle kicks and cartwheels you're so strong there you go man okay but um, yeah like sometimes god might have to break your heart mm. to build you up again mm. and that might mean he has to take you out of a relationship you're not meant to be in that might mean that you just need to learn like to trust in god's wisdom rather than your own relationships are hard man mm -hmm. like they don't get me wrong they're meant to be enjoyed they're meant to lead on to something like marriage and something fruitful but mm. they're hard man and mm. you want to kind of think what's worth me spending this much energy mm. and going through this much difficulty like at least let it be something of substance mm. and if it's not something that's going to build me up then really and truly do i like have business be in there when you went through your heartbreak how did your church come around you or did certain people in your church come um, around so you? i do have like a spiritual family um okay. i just burped that might spell i'm not part of that um <laughs> cool. i feel in like you're way, my spiritual yeah, brother brother, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> So I've got like a spiritual sister who like I share pretty much everything with and then I've got my spiritual mother. Actually with both of them I've, I've grown to be very transparent because I came from a place of I keep everything to myself um, and just before I found them actually. Strong and mighty. Nothing can bring me down. I was screaming. Mm. One verse that God um, or one word that God gave me before they kind of started coming to my life little by little was, was God places the lonely in families. And for a long time, although I was putting up a strong That's persona, good, yeah, I keep burping. I shouldn't have let me eat for a long <laughs> for a long Excuse time. Me. Although I was doing the whole strong and mighty thing, I was very very lonely and I had no one to share the heartbreaks with and I had no one to share mm -hmm. what I'm going the depression the anxiety right. um so it, I mean it, having my tribe there and having them actually listen to me for a period of time and also having them say do you know what more enough is enough yeah yeah it's time to start rising up again I think you can actually you can actually give your heartbreak to God there's a there's a verse in the Psalms God is close to the heartbroken right Am I yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I can't remember the reference. But yeah, yeah, but I'll try and put it right here. We, we don't believe that a lot. Huh? We don't believe that a yeah, lot. Yeah, we overcomplicate um, spirituality and Christianity. And we don't believe we can lay certain things at, mm -hmm. at Jesus' feet. And yeah. God is absolutely saying, run to me. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember when everything kind of went down and I was like, I'm going to church. I actually was meant to lead praise and worship that day, but I just like I called um, mm. one of my choir people. My spiritual mother wasn't around at the time, and this is why counsel is so important. Um, and I was like, I'm not going. For the first time ever, I was like, I'm oh. not going. My God, my God. And um, she, my spiritual mother, called me and she was like, Mo, like she knew something had happened. She said, she said, what happened? Mm -hmm. um, and I told her, and she actually, and like we both were crying on the phone just as a result of certain things that I told her before in the Some past. Emotional conversation. Yeah, it was man. super emotional, and she was like, Mo, I know you're hurt right now, but you need to go and serve God. Um, and then she told me about the story of Esther and Vashti when Vashti was called up to the king's palace and she declined um, based off of pride and certain things obviously it wasn't a prideful moment for me but she was like don't 
don't decline the call of God upon your life, especially in this moment right now. Um, and literally, like, just going off course a little bit, um, mm. that service, that was one of the most powerful worship sessions I'd ever led. Mm. And I, it was as a result of it was coming from a place of, do you know what, God? I'm laying it all. Yeah, like, you. that was real worshiping <laughs> in spirit and in feet. truth, more than anything. More than the spirit, it was Come truth. On, like, I was, I, was, I was so hurt, but I was <laughs> like, God, you know what? I just give it all to you in this moment. Your response to these kind of situations tends to be big, like from habit. Mm. So you don't plan where you're gonna go. Like it's not like when your heart is broken, you're gonna say, "Cool, where am I gonna go? <laughs> Should I go there?" No, nah, it doesn't happen. You just go somewhere. Mm. And we gotta train ourselves to know that God is there for us in those moments. And those are the moments where we're meant to, like you said, lay everything before Him. So mm. when it happens, we're just straight away saying, "Cool, I'm gonna go there." Mm. I remember when my girlfriend passed. Mm. That the night that I heard the news. I did, the first thing I did was just open up my Bible and I was just like shouting out Romans 8. Mm. Romans 8? Yeah, Romans 8. And just shouting it out. And I, that was not planned. That was yeah. just like, I'd, I'd, yeah, that was just like some, some things that happened the weeks beforehand kind of just guided me there and yeah. let me know that this is between you and God, my bro. Mm. So yeah, our heartbreak is the same. Like, run to him, not run from him. Like, I am... Um grateful for the heartbreaks and you know what oh, um no. we're, we're we're having an amazing event um called the love fest 2019 Jeez. and i will be speaking on um some of my experiences of like heartbreak mm-hmm. of relationships how i similar to this video but yeah, in, yeah, a, in yeah. a lot more depth yeah um, and i'll be speaking on how to secure babes in this 2019 that's not what you're going to be talking about you might not. i swear i need to change my notes then I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. Gosh, man. What's oh. that? Crickets. Is that how crickets sound? How do they sound? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me joke, please. I love that. I you love know what? That. <laughs> I love that. What are you going to be talking about, Emmanuel? Um, goodness gracious. Unconventional love stories. Yes, that is our theme. Unconventional, unconventional love, love stories. stories. Love stories that don't go to convention. They're unconventional. Because we find that a lot of the time with a lot of these like Christian relation um Christian events, relationship wise, it's always, you know, about the one and da 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 One thing I don't want to do is disc- discriminate. I want both men and women there. Come through man then. So more Roll than anything, I know I know the ladies are gonna come, but yeah, boys, yeah, please <laughs> You don't come in numbers. Grab your tickets. Women, grab your tickets. I am all about teaching people to be the best versions of themselves. Come on now. Personally, professionally, spiritually. Um, We are going to be talking about unconventional love stories in every single relationship status. And single is a relationship status. So we are including that in unconventional love stories. So we have a lot of panelists um, tailored to minister to the singles minister to those in relationships minister to those that are married or who want to move through those levels mm-hmm. um just regardless of whatever stage of life that you're in bring your bae if you're in a relationship bring your bae if you're married bring your husband bring your wife bring your kids yes your boyfriend and girlfriend it's it's why not bring everyone Come it's going family. to be Do an come. amazing event and we are going to go in depth and you know me i go deep um so we're going to be talking about a lot of things that a lot of Christians think, think they are invincible too, but we do experience as well. We experience heartbreak, we experience failed relationships, oh um, and many other things. So, um, yeah, please, guys, do get your tickets. Um, last year was amazing. This year, bigger and better. Bigger and better is going to be amazing. You know, wow. That, that made me jump a little bit. What's from that's you? Exactly, that's what the event's going to do. It's going to make you jump.
okay guys thank you guys so much for this video um do subscribe to emmanuel's channel uncle faith talks you're uploading once a week now aren't you are you in that routine yeah yeah once a week yeah so we've been saying that for a while haven't we no it's i've actually been consistent i took okay. a break last week because i've been on job for a couple of weeks yeah so i took a break a production break but i've been stacking up content though so i'm oh, ready good. to go bam, 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 bam. awesome we've got videos coming up for the next like 27 years yeah, amazing plug yourself come on now until next time guys um, oh. coming soon as well. oh you do that's amazing oh. that's amazing not too much can be shared on that one still make sure you like this video if you liked it share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more until next time peace, peace and, and love, love peace, peace and, and chunks, chunks.